Welcome back to News Geelong as we look at the world of Geelong sport with our very own Mitch Scoop Cleary. Good evening, Mitch. Thanks, Rollo. I'm down here at the Geelong Falcons training where we spoke to Geelong's Zach Sherman, a St Mary's halfback flanker who's hoping to get picked up in this year's AFL draft. How have you enjoyed your season so far, Zach? Um, it's been a pretty good season so far. Uh, been up and down a little bit, but um, starting to get back to even level now. Uh, six and seven, heading into another break, so hopefully we'll snag eight spot and play finals and go all right. You played here last year. How do you think that helped you going into this year? You've had a year in the system and now you, this is your draft year. Uh, well, it definitely helps. You know, just a bit more experience, learning off um, blokes last year that got drafted, just like Tay, Dev, um, Jack O'Merritt and all them. They um, sort of help you along a bit in your bottom age year. And this year, you just try and put into place what you learnt from them and, and maybe help the younger kids as well. See if you can help them to get drafted the next year. Yeah. Do you have much contact with those guys? Taylor Adams was down here a few weeks ago, I understand. Do you have much contact with those guys? Um, yeah, I spoke to them a little bit. He, when they come down to train, you always catch up with them, ask them how they're going, uh, ask them how life at an AFL club is. It's always interesting to find out. Um, you find out it's a bit different to TAC footy, just the professionalism, it's just another step up. So. Yeah, it's always good to find that sort of stuff out. You played in the carnival recently with Vic Country. How did you enjoy that experience? Uh, yeah, it was a good experience. Got to play in the last two games against Vic Metro and South Australia. Um, it was a bit different, plenty of fun. Um, you learn a lot with the step up in intensity, so yeah, enjoyed it. And getting out on the skills stadium as well as Etihad Stadium, good experience as well? Yeah, played on skilled a bit with the Falcons and Always good to play in the home ground. A few mates got down there from school, took the day off to watch, so that was a good experience. And then Eddie had, just under the roof, very strange experience. The first time walking out there, I think a few of the boys were a bit shocked. I don't know who I was, just looking up and stuff, so it was good. And can you just explain what sort of player you are and uh, what sort of role you play in the Falcons? Um, well, I'm sort of a half-back midfielder. Last year, played all half-back, um, trying to run off, beat the man first. Uh, started this year, moved into the midfield and was just playing midfield, rotating off the bench, like starting in the midfield, then gone off. And then last few games I've played, been thrown back to half-back again just to sort of try and get some run, stuff like that. So, yeah. yeah. And just explain how helpful the Falcons and um, Andy Orthorpe and Mick Turner have been. Um, well, I don't think uh, Andy's been great this year. Um, first year as coach, I think learned a lot off him. He's a real good communicator. Um, always wants to help the boys out. Uh, uh, he's always got time for you. Any questions, just always happy to help. And I think Mick is probably almost the best regional manager there is. Uh, he gets us all these facilities, got a great gym, all the gym equipment and stuff like that, just to get us stronger, just to help us out on the ground. So I think it's a massive help for us and all the boys. Thanks, Zach. Now we're down to the Geelong Footy Club to speak to Geelong coach Chris Scott ahead of tonight's clash against Essendon at Etihad Stadium. He said he's had enough of answering the make or break questions ahead of another big match. I hope so. I hope so. I mean, I, I think feel like I've been answering questions for the last six or eight weeks about make or break games and season defining periods. Um, we'll do everything we possibly can to win this week. And whatever happens, we'll do the same next week. Scott said he was still confident the Cats could produce their best footy at the business end of the year. No, I'm confident that, we'll, we, that we can win every game we play. I'm confident of that. doesn't necessarily mean it's going to happen. Um, and at the end of the season, We'll tally up our games and if we make the finals, then I dare say that we'll still be pretty confident that we can win every game we play from there. Scott said there were still a number of options he could look into to solve the ruck problem at Geelong. Short term, not, not really. I mean, you're right, Westy's our number one ruckman at the moment. Um, but you know, it was pretty obvious with the recruitment of Oren Stevenson um, for this season that when Brad Otten's retiring, that we, we do have uh, a, a slightly different ruck situation. 
Um, all of our Ruckman bar Oran are very inexperienced uh, and they're going to take time. Uh, we certainly didn't expect uh, Dawson Simpson and Trent West to dominate the competition. Um, so that, that's a work in progress. Um, I'm very confident that what works for us short term um, is going to be a little bit different to what works for us long term. So we've got to balance those two. Scott was unaware of how the sackings at Ford would affect their long-standing sponsorship. Not that I know of. Um, it's only just happened and Brian Cook's probably a better person to answer that question, but we certainly do feel for all the Ford em employees, particularly the ones in Geelong. Ford have been a fantastic partner of the Geelong Footy Club. It's one of the longest sponsorships, if not the longest sponsorship arrangements in the world. Um, so um, probably neither of us can um, really uh, prosper without the other so we do feel for Ford and we'll do our very best to support them. Scott admitted he would have loved to have had Jimmy Bartol for last week's clash against Collingwood and tonight's match against Essendon. In reference to Jimmy's discipline I think uh, there hasn't been a pattern of behaviour that we need to worry about. Jimmy's uh, he's a ball player. Um, we understand uh, his thought process um, in that specific incident. Certainly wasn't malicious. Uh, he deserved to be suspended for it. Um, it was a, an error of judgment and execution, um, but it certainly wasn't deliberate. It didn't go to his mindset. So, um, from that respect, um, you know, I'm I'm okay with where it sits. Um, would have loved to have had him last week and irrespective of the result this weekend uh, I'm sure I'll be thinking I would have loved to have, have him, had him in that game. Thanks Chris and from down here at the Geelong Falcons height and reserve it's back to you in the studio Rollo. Thank you Mitch and good luck in your return to the captain's role of the St Mary's Division 1 Colts tomorrow morning. And now for all the weather conditions expected for Geelong and the surf coast over the next six days. Let's look at the week ahead. Tomorrow, Saturday, we'll see areas of morning fog, followed by a mostly sunny afternoon with some light winds and a top of 15. Then starting off another week of July, Sunday will continue to be mostly sunny conditions with light winds and a top of 15. While Monday will be partly cloudy, areas of morning fog with light winds and a top of 14. Tuesday will be cloudy with northwesterly winds and a top of 15. Wednesday will continue to be cloudy with isolated showers and a top of 13, while Thursday will be partly cloudy with isolated showers and also a top of 13. Today it was partly cloudy with isolated showers until late this afternoon as we reached a top temperature of 15. And that's another bleak winter weather outlook for Geelong and the surf coast. So remember, take your time and smell the flowers. From all the team at News Geelong, enjoy the rest of the evening. Have a safe and enjoyable weekend and a very good night. <laughs>